Hello and welcome to episode 37 of the All Things Leeds podcast with myself, uh, Ed McIntyre, and joining me in the studio is, as always, my co-host, Charles Foster. Hello. Hello, Matt. I just can't believe we've done 37 of these. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? It's mad. It does feel mad, yeah. Yeah, you all right? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I'm good, yeah. Yeah, good. My voice voice still hurts after the game on Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. mine's... uh... (laughs) It was a very good game. Yeah, Yeah, it was a good game on Tuesday. Yeah, we will, of course, uh, talk about that game. Two games to go over uh, in this episode. We'll look back on briefly on uh, uh, Leeds United's uh, winner loss to Charlton Athletic away at the Valley from last Saturday. Uh, Before we recap what really was a big win on Tuesday night, Leeds beating uh, West Brom uh, 1-0 at Ellen Road to go top of the championship table, for now anyway. Uh, We'll also look at the uh, Leeds United under-23s and their 2-1 loss at home to Crewe last Monday. Uh, Quite a lot of pieces of uh, news to discuss as well some good news regarding Luke Kalin as he signed a uh, new deal at Leeds United some very bad news though uh, injury news uh, though uh, so uh, we'll, a lot of news to discuss uh, we'll get into that uh, later on so plenty to discuss here uh, all of this coming up uh, on the All Things League podcast <laughs> So let's start then uh, by uh, just brushing over last Saturday's game. Leeds United, of course, losing uh, 1-0 to uh, Lee Bullier's Charlton Athletic away at the Valley. Now, uh, I wasn't able to uh, watch this uh, full game as I was doing media work at Farsley Celtic. Uh, of course, non-league football club here in Leeds, if you don't know about Farsley Celtic. Uh, nice nice win for them. Uh, Two-one win at home over Curzon Aston. Good, uh, good ground. Yeah. yeah. Well worth going down if you get some spare time. Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially international break coming up. Get, get yourself down to a Farsley Celtic. Uh, but uh, looking at highlights and reading reports and, and hearing from other people, for, for me, Charles, this was a case of, uh, we, by the standards that Leeds United have set themselves, we were poor. It, it was an off day and, and probably our worst performance of the season, but from the run of play, from possession, passing and shots and chances created, we dominated and, and probably shouldn't have lost the game. Yeah, there was, there was quite a few chances where we probably should have put more... Uh, uh, opportunities was the shoot which we didn't take. Uh, I remember the one right at the end of the game, I think it was like the 94th minute or something, four shot a shot, it was about three yards out. All he had to do was bury it and the keeper made an absolute world of a save. So it was one of them where we just, you just never thought we were going to score ever during yeah. the game. You, you feel as though if we were still playing now, we probably wouldn't be yeah, able to we, score Yeah, we still be 1-0 that. Mind you, their goal was nothing special. No, it it was just a calamitous goal. It reminded me of the of the Forest one that Graben scored against us where it was just... Everyone got in each other's way. It was ping ponging around uh, the ball, ping ponging around the box, and it just trickled in. Yeah, and it was just one of them poor goals. Yeah, well, we'll go on to the goal then. So, of course, Charlton went one 0 ahead on 32 minutes. Uh, it's gone down as a uh, Macaulay Bond uh, goal. Uh, it was a former corner. Surprise, surprise. Which we're awful at defending from set pieces and crosses. Uh, but the ball uh, from, the, from the corner was in towards uh, Lockyer. Uh, his shot was uh, parried by Casilla uh, straight into Bon, uh, who was right in front of Casilla, and, uh, and then the, uh, the ball ended up trickling into the back of the net. I don't know what on earth Casilla is doing here. Uh, the more you see it, the worse it gets, really. What what on earth is Casilla doing here? Like, it, it, the ball's come to him, and he's just punched it out to a player who's literally right in front of him. It's going to go nowhere else but the back of the net. I'm, I'm going to be charitable here, and I'm <laughs> which I'm not I, I'm not often. And um, when the ball does come to him at some speed, he doesn't, he doesn't really seem to see it coming, so he, he palms it. But don't punch it in front of you. But, I mean, catch but, it or just throw it in the air. The thing is, though, that Alioski is completely blocking his, his field of vision yeah. by being laid, uh, kind of stood in front of him. Whereas if, if I honestly think if Alioski wasn't where he was, if he was somewhere else in the box, Casilla saves that. Yeah, but just punch it anywhere else, though. Not it, right in front of you. Right, it's, I know the punch is a problem, but also, I, it's the, I said about the Forest goal uh, a couple of minutes ago, The it, that was the same one. Uh, Casilla was trying to save it, and like four Leeds players get in his way, trying to block it, and prevent Casilla from getting any hands on it. The you, You've got to sometimes trust your keeper. And, um, yeah. and we'll come on to the... The West Brom game in a minute. Um, there was a point in the game where Alioski had, had an extended yeah. go at uh, Casilla for for not coming out and assisting his defence when he could have done. Yeah. And for for um, but in this instance, he gets in his way. He blocks yeah. field division, and then the ball actually bounces off Alioski. Yeah, its it way does, in. doesn't it? It's an on goal. Whereas, whereas <laughs> if Alioski isn't there, 
that shot comes in, it, it's going right towards Casilla. Casilla sees it, yeah. grabs it. It looked like it came off of our play. It, it should have been an own goal, but it did go down as McCauley Bond's goal. But the more you see it, the worse it gets. And it was a really poor goal to concede. Uh, that made it 1 0 to Charlton. Uh, we were 1 0 down at half time. But it, it was against the one of play. You know, we, we were dominating the game. We just struggled to break them down, and, and nothing seemed to work for us. At two points in the game, there was a cross that came across the box from Harrison's side. Um, that literally the, the defender got a t- touch on it both times, and both times it was nearly an own goal. Yeah. Uh, uh, very similar to the. Well, we'll get onto that later yeah. on. Uh, <laughs> but it was very nearly own goal. So we, ne- we, ne- we could have been two 0 up off own goals yeah. alone in the first half. <laughs> that's that's what all our goals seem to be nowadays, just own goals. We just we just keep <laughs> chucking the ball into dangerous areas, and yeah. teams are quite happy for us. <laughs> to score for us <laughs> yeah it's quite nice it's quite nice but yeah no, we, we just struggled to break them down which I think uh, we need to learn because a lot of teams will do what Charlton do they'll sit back and we need to learn to break teams like Charlton down but we, yeah we, we just struggled to break them down nothing seemed to work for us there were loads of times during the game I was watching it on stream and every time I kept on glancing at it we, we'd have a ball in a really good position I'd just be screaming shoot but we just wouldn't shoot we, we'd, no. al- we'd always attempt to go for the cross uh, for some reason because I, I we, we're awful at crossing. Um, so yeah. We attempted 38 crosses again uh, uh, against Charlton. Yeah, and we're not good at crossing. I, I don't know what, how many were successful, but it was below 10. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're not good at crossing at all. Um, but yeah, nothing seemed to work for us. We were 1-0 down at half-time. Bielsa then brings on uh, Eddie Nketiah for Alioski and then for sure on for Jamie Shackleton and changes the formation to a 3-5-2 almost, which was uh, quite interesting. We've never seen Bielsa make such a drastic change before. We've seen him make, make subs at half-time, but to change the entire system around? Yeah, I think you could see that we were not really getting anywhere we were struggling to get particularly I thought Costa struggled to get forward in this game it didn't really have much of an impact at all um, so yeah I know, I know it was a radical change um, it was almost a throw it was kind of it's the kind of change you make about most managers making on like the 75th 80th minute the kind of throw the kitchen sink at it change where you basically go right sod defending we're just going to attack yeah uh, but Bielsa did it at half, t- half time <laughs> um, which opened us up a bit but we, we, I thought we were slightly better in the second half, but we still couldn't get anything going. Yeah, yeah. Again, we missed a lot more opportunities. I remember Enketia and Costa missing uh, a, a few There's chances. There's Harrison just spooned over the bar, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the Enketia volleyed wide, didn't he? Just yeah. about. Um, although to be fair, that would have gone in if Costa wasn't ball watching. He was yeah. ball. He was. If, if it had just been at the back post, he'd have tapped that in. Yeah. But he was. He was watching Enketia instead. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Pl- plenty of more missed opportunities. Just. We- just we, we just struggled to break him down. Nothing worked for us on no. the day. And, uh, of course, we ended up losing a uh, 1-0. Uh, it wasn't good. And, and there were quite some worrying signs. You know, it, it, it was a poor performance. Well, yeah. But let, let's set about the bet. Let's about <laughs> yeah. <that> the better. <laughs> uh, after that loss, though, and another results uh, last weekend, we only dropped down to fourth and sat two points behind the league leaders, uh, West Brom. Uh, we've still not dropped below fourth in the league while under Marcel Bielsa, which is just remarkable. What an achievement. <laughs> It is, it is impressive, um, but uh, it has been fortunate at times. Teams above us, around us, have dropped points as well. But it is still a very good, yeah, a very good start. Yeah, it's a very good it's start. It's impressive. Yeah, uh, but that's all in the past now, though. Let's move on to uh, Tuesday night's game and uh, Leeds, of course, uh, winning one nil uh, against West Brom at Ellen Road. And uh, well, what a win! What a win! Yeah, it was a game we we really needed to win. Yeah, um, I know that you get these. The football cliche is six pointers, but when you when you're at home to a team that's top of the league and you want and, and you have the opportunity to go top of the league, then you need to win it. Yeah, I mean it sounds after saying this early on, but it is a game where at the end of the season, if we miss out on promotion, automatic promotion at least by about three points, then it, this could be a game that you look back on. Like last season, the games at home against Norwich and Sheffield United, we yeah. lost both of them, and those are the teams that finished above us. Yeah, and then you look back on it, and, and you think if we'd yeah. have won those two games, an extra six points. We're above both. Yeah, we're, uh, we're not above both, but we're above Sheffield United. Yeah. And we're in the Premier League right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, going into the game, were you nervous? Were you excited about it? Um, I always think we perform better against better teams yeah. anyway. Teams yeah, we come, do. Um, we, we always play terribly against teams that yeah. are themselves terrible. Yeah. And of course there was that feeling as well. Last season we thrashed West Brom 4-0 at home, but the game before that we lost 1-0 to QPR, a team in London. Going into this, we lost 1-0 to Charlton, uh, away at Charlton yeah, in that, London. That Charlton game had kind of shades of that QPR game, because yeah. that QPR game we had a lot of chances as well, and we yeah. just couldn't 
find the oh, goal. And we conceded a sloppy goal, and then uh, we ended up losing one 0 But then going into West Brom, and yeah, there, there was there was a lot of, there was a lot of things around it. We had a good re- home record against West Brom as well. We we hadn't had a good record overall against lost, West Brom. Only we lost one in our last ten home yes. against West Brom. So. And now we've only lost one in our last eleven, no, uh, yes, which is great. Um, but yeah, going into the game, uh, I, I was quite nervous. Uh, unchanged lineup, which surprised me. I was really wanting some changes, but the unchanged lineup seemed to work. Obviously, uh, a huge three points for Leeds United. Um, a great first half uh, from Leeds. I felt we we pressed well, we attacked well. I did feel as though we were the better side. West Brom had a few spells, but for me, I felt as though we were the better side. Uh, we missed a few uh, chances, click early on, missed a really good opportunity, um, but we did go win a up on 38 minutes. Um, Alioski. Uh, Seemed to be, we, we, they were all in the box, ball was in the box, we had the ball, everyone just shouting shoot, uh, Jack Harrison. It, it, was it, a t- it, it was a cross. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jack Harrison turns around, lays it off Talioski, and yeah, it, it was a cross, wasn't it? I think he was trying to find Bamford, yeah, well. um, but it ended up taking a deflection off Kyle Bartley, of all people, and ended up going into the back of the net. Uh, yeah, the West Brom players and, and pundits are all claiming that's... Um, that's an own goal, but the Leeds page announced it was an Alioski goal. It B- did it. B- BBC Sport announced it was an Alioski yeah, goal. Yeah, but I've I've seen it, and Alioski's initial like when 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 the ball leaves his foot, it didn't look on target. No, it didn't. It look looked like he was going to hit the post or go wide. Yeah, it looked like it was going wide to yeah. me. If that was a car bat, if that went down as a car bat, Leo goal, that'd be great. <laughs> no, Once leads, always leads. But but BBC Sport have announced it as an Alioski yeah, goal. So. Alioski goal uh, from from the. The LUCV angle, it looks like Alioski's just fired it in. Yeah, from but a few angles, it looked like Bamford had got a touch on it, but if Bamford would have touched it, it'd have been given offside. Yeah, it would have been cause offside because he, he was offside. Yeah, um, but yeah, it was. I, I I was a bit surprised we'd scored. I I didn't think. I, yeah, I just saw Alioski hit the ball, and then all of a sudden it was in the back of the net. I was I was, like, I, was hey? bit, I was a bit shocked. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> I think everyone was. Yeah, but yeah, I was I was I was buzzing. Obviously, um, yeah, I don't think anyone expected Alioski of all people to shoot and score. But it, it wasn't. No, it, it wasn't. Obviously, cross, our, our fullbacks in the Bills system do score quite a few goals. Dallas yeah. has a few. Alioski does. I, I, I think he got seven or eight last season. Alioski from like left back. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> our fullbacks do score fairly regularly. Yeah. Um, that. What we're going to talk about next, what just before half time, the uh, the kind of Bamford and Costa double effort against Johnson at uh, Johnston. Uh, we um, <clears throat> I couldn't really see what was going on, and I was in the stadium. Yeah. People, everyone <laughs> jumped up because it looked like Bamford had scored, and then he missed that. Like, oh. Yeah, we'll go uh, on to that. So yeah, but of course Alioski he put us a uh, one 0 up. Uh, goal's a goal, uh, no matter how you score it. If if it took a deflection off Carl yeah. and it would have been no goal. A goal's a goal, one 0 ahead. A uh, one 0 at half time, but we we could have been and should have been two 0 up really. A great double chance, uh, really. So Alioski he shot towards goal, uh, save. Uh, oh no, it wasn't a save. Uh, Alioski shot towards goal. Bamford he got a touch on it. Wasn't a strong enough touch. Uh, so uh, the goalkeeper Sam Johnson, who I thought had a really good game, uh, Sam Johnson. I think Bamford thought he was offside. It, yeah, I, I think because obviously the, I think their fullback was playing him on. Yeah, we'll play it, to the whistle. I know, I know. You should obviously, yeah. um, uh, especially as a professional footballer. Uh, but. He, he he seemed a bit surprised to get the chance. Yeah, uh, um, but he, he didn't get a strong enough touch. In it. He, he, he should have scored that one. The yeah, co- the, the Costa one was much harder because he was close to the post. The yeah, keeper well, was already coming towards him. Yeah, well, Bamford he, he he got the touch onto the ball once strong enough. Sam Johnson made a save, and then Sam Johnson rushes right in front of Helder Costa. So Helder Costa has nothing to aim at but the goalkeeper. So yeah, uh, I think it, it was just a really uh, it was a good double chance for Leeds but also a really good double save from Sam Johnston he had a bit of a world of a game yeah he did have a really good game he really really did especially coming for crosses I thought it was brilliant and I was thinking Kiko Kse should take should take uh, a few notes <laughs> to be fair there was one corner in the in the second half which I think we'll get uh, I don't know if we're going to get onto that one where you, you were moaning at Kase for, for the punch but I literally because he, he tipped it over but I thought I was watching that thinking if he hadn't tipped that over Bartley's head was on that yeah, and that probably would have been a goal. Yeah, um, so yeah, his uh, his co- collection in the air, his work, but he's yeah. actually he's punched and he's tapping away. He's all right because here. Yeah, uh, but I was very impressed with with West Brom's goalkeeper Sam Johnson. Yeah, he was, of course, he was very good. Yeah, of course, one at half time. Uh, we bring on Tyler Roberts for Jamie Shackleton due to injury. I think everyone was quite surprised at the time, but it has come out that it was an injury, and Shackleton uh, is out for a month with a hamstring injury. And Joy. that's a big miss because Shackleton he played really, really well against he did. West Brom. He did. He was. Uh, we kind of lost control of the midfield once he went um, yeah. off at half time because he was picking up a lot of loose balls. He was harassed. In. 
uh, West Brom's midfield, and he was driving us forward and, and linking up really well with Helder Costa a lot of the time down the down the right. Yeah. Um, but and we really missed him when he went off. Yeah. Even Bielsa said after after the game he wouldn't have taken Jamie Shackleton off otherwise, um, as he was really having a good game and and he really was. Jamie Shackleton was excellent. I was saying before the game, I'd I'd probably drop Jamie Shackleton, give someone else a go. Start Tyler Roberts, but Jamie Shackleton for me was excellent that first half, and now he's out with a out for a month with a hamstring injury. Hopefully, he does have a good and speedy recovery, but he he will be a, a really big miss for Jamie Shackleton. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Disappointing because he's only just kind of um, cemented his kind of first team spot with obviously with Adam Forshaw out for a while. Yeah, so I imagine he'll be gutted about that because he could have really uh, if he'd have got a few more games. I imagine B also would have had a bit of a selection issue there with yeah. him for sure. Yeah, absolutely. He was getting his chance and uh, unfortunately he's picked up an injury. And that was the, the uh, only injury that we picked up on the night. Liam Cooper was subbed off uh, midway through the first half for uh, Gaetano Barardi. And uh, news has come out today that uh, Liam Cooper uh, is uh, now out for six weeks with a groin strain, which is not good. Uh, it's not good at Always all. Always nice to lose your captain for six weeks. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not good oh, news at all. It's terrible news, that. Yeah. Especially how light we are in central defence. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, Bavadi. He 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 played. Uh, he played okay. Did, did Bavadi? Of course, he kept a clean sheet. He did well, and he was winning a lot of headers. Um, you, but you can tell when a centre back's playing well because you don't know. You don't notice them. Yeah, <laughs> but but you you don't like for Liam Cooper especially. Like it, for me, there's just no like super like super replacement for him really. Bavadi can do a job, but on that left hand side of that cent- of the uh, central defence. Yeah, it's, it's hard to replace him. It's, of course, a captain as well. I, I would love us to stick in Pascal Schuick. I really do yeah. want to give him a first team shot. And yeah. I know, obviously, Bielsa like Brady. Brady's um, probably the most. I think he's the, is he the longest serving Leeds player we've got now, or is that Cooper? One of one of them. One, one of them too. Dallas but, as well. Um, you know, but Dallas was, came after Cooper, so it's, it's either Brady or, or I think Cooper. it's Cooper. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so he's one of the most experienced players in the squad. He's also one of the oldest players in the squad. Yeah. Brady. So um, I know he likes Brady in there. For me, Brady is a bit aggressive. Yeah. Um, I know obviously we like his aggression, but he's a bit temperamental, and obviously the height issue. He's only like five foot eight. Um, I would start Struik personally yeah Big, uh, as lad. long as calvin phillips doesn't get moved into center back because i don't like that no that, that, <laughs> i don't like that at all no that doesn't that very rarely works yeah. uh but yeah we are without liam cooper for the next six weeks uh, with a going stream remember though an international break coming up so we've got this week we've got two weeks of international break so um liam cooper is probably only going to miss three or four games um, Jim Shackleton probably uh, will only miss uh, two or three. So uh, yeah, just remember there, there is a two-week break, so we're, we're not we're not going to be without him for, for loads and loads of games. No. Um, but we are without him, so hopefully Jim Shackleton and Liam Cooper have uh, very good and speedy recoveries. They are going to be a big miss. Um, isn't it ironic though how uh, Cooper's picked up an injury and Bavardi is in there just in time for when we go away to Millwall this Saturday, <laughs> where the ball will probably not touch the floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's written in the stars for Bavardi to get sent off against Millwall, is it? Yeah, I mean hopefully he's going to headbutt Matt Smith in the kneecaps. <laughs> Get set yeah. oh, it's, I, I look forward to defending the corners. Yeah. <laughs> it's going yeah. to be awful. I mean, Bavadi does win a lot of headers for, for a short guy, but... He's not going to be yeah. the likes of... Uh, <laughs> no. It's not just Smith. Who else in their team is, is brilliant at winning headers? There's loads of them. Yeah, they're, they're a very tall team at Millwall. Uh, but yeah, Bavadi starting against Millwall. Yes, please. We're, yes, we're just, just going to have to not... <laughs> concede any free kicks and not allow anything to go out for a corner yeah <laughs> um, then we'll be, we'll be absolutely fine <laughs> yeah uh, moving on to the uh, second half then uh, the second half we, we just sat back and defended the lead really um, and, and it was, was quite nervy but for me I was just thinking why on earth we've brought on Tyler Roberts as you know we didn't push forward and and, and we didn't play to Tyler Roberts' strengths and you expect if you want if you want your sub to make to make an impact if you don't push forward and play to your sub strength of Tyler Roberts' strengths then he's not going to do anything and um, yeah of course uh, Tyler Roberts who was subbed off midway through the second half for Luke Kalin who's made his return uh, from injury uh, that moved Dallas into centre mid uh, which was interesting but Tyler Roberts yeah we sub him on sub him on at half time he does nothing but we we just sit back really early and he gets subbed off and it's interesting. Bielsa said in his post-match that he read the game wrong. I think he, he thought we were going to uh, kind of continue what we are doing in the first half and push for the second. No. Whereas what the Leeds players did was to sit off so off the West Brom players. So the Leeds players doing deep. something that Bielsa isn't like... Uh, Bielsa well no, isn't Bielsa would have, would, uh, would have given them instructions before the game but you, the Leeds players would have thought 
I don't know if whether consciously decided to drop deeper or whether West Brom West Brom did attack a lot more in the second half yeah. e- even when we were pressing them yeah they attacked really so well so yeah. the, the least players probably did react to that and drop kind of 10 yards yeah. deeper and we pretty much defended for the entire half yeah so Bielsa said oh you read the game wrong and he apologised the first thing he said was he apologised to Tyler Roberts in the, yeah. first, in the post-match yeah definitely I wonder how Tyler Roberts is feeling yeah, it's quite an embarrassing moment his for, former club as well which must which yeah, must hurt it's quite an embarrassing moment for a player to be subbed on and then subbed off yeah I know but it, it, I don't think it was to do with his performance it was just because we needed a more yeah. defensive player so we moved uh, Dallas to centre mid which we got a little bit more control back when Dallas was in centre mid and obviously Aaron went to right back yeah, and we looked a little bit more solid, but we still had, we were still de- defending a lot yeah. of the time. Uh, Tyler Roberts, he didn't really do much though when he came on, but we we did sit back and we didn't play to his strengths, as I say. But Tyler Roberts, he had, he dragged a shot well wide of that left hand post, and that, that was pretty much all he did really. So yeah, yeah, he, he he wasn't too good, but as I say, he's a forward, and we didn't push forward. We just sat back and let and let West Brom uh, press us, and, and yeah, did, it was very very nervous. We played him in centre mid, and he's more of a striker or winger. So yeah, it, but it, it was very very uh, it was a very very uh, nervy uh, second half. Um, West Brom they did press really well. They attacked really well. Uh, Matus uh, Pereira. Uh, for me, I, I thought I was very impressed with him uh, from from West Brom. I thought it was he, he looked very good. Uh, yeah, how was he was <laughs> when you got the money that West Brom have got with yeah. the. Uh, undeserved TV rights money that they get <laughs> and we haven't got I'm not bitter about that uh, yeah, yeah he's the kind of calibre player they can they can attract yeah I mean he's got pace it, it, Re- I thought it was going to score at some point yeah reasonable amount of skill he didn't really shoot enough uh, yeah, he did miss a, a few chances he did drag, it, drag that, a shot just wide of the right in the I think post. it was his shot which Casilla had to dive to save as well yeah there was that free kick as well that went just I thought I'd gone in yeah but just wide of that uh, there post. was that one where it was whipped uh, it was like a cross w- w- from the side, and it hit the side netting, and I thought it had gone in. Yeah, because the because w- the angle we were, we were stood at, I thought it'd, I thought it definitely gone in. Yeah, but, but no, um, yeah, he probably should have had a goal. Yeah, uh, and you, you, I said this during the game um, that. They probably did deserve one. One would have probably yeah. been a fair result. I mean, I and you, you, will, you had a right go for saying <laughs> no, well, that. No, well, I, I want, to, I want to win uh, during the game. I don't want to be. I don't want to. I was saying to you, they probably have deserved. Yeah, a goal I mean, there. I don't think a draw would have been an unfair result. Uh, I do feel if West Brom had nicked a goal and it was a draw, you'd look back on it and think, but yeah, probably a fair result because we, 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 we were the better side in the first half. They were the better side in the second half. Yeah, I, yeah. one, one, one probably would have been fair, but you know. Sod it. I've yeah. got the three points. <laughs> yeah. Top of the league. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it was very nervy, uh, but we uh, defended very well. Um, and, of course, we held on uh, to win uh, 1-0. And it's a massive, massive three points. Yeah, it kind of gets us back on track. Um, if we can just finish off the weekend with another three points before the international break, then we can kind of forget about the, the kind of disappointments of Charlton and um, and Swansea and, and Derby where we've dropped u- unnecessary points. Yeah, and we can focus on the uh, the game against the centenary game against Birmingham after the international break, yeah. or after Millwall, where we, and we can, you know, kind of kick on again. Yeah, we'll hopefully do what we did last year and go on that kind of seven game win streak. <laughs> seven game win streak that'd be very nice, wouldn't it? That that would be very nice. Uh, just before we move on from the West Brom game, though, uh, a word on the ref. I, I thought the referee he got a few decisions, go- like he got a few decisions right, um, but. I thought for the majority of the game, he was really, really poor. Um, I mean, we should, probably should have had a penalty in that first half for handball, I, I feel. Um, if yeah. that was a, uh, if that had been a dodgy one, if, yeah. if that had been given against Leeds, he'd have, he'd have felt a bit unfortunate because yeah. his hand was fairly close to his body. Yeah, He did award West Brom five yellow cards, so I don't know how anyone didn't get sent off. No, I don't that, know how that was anyone. amazing. It, it felt like about ten yellow cards. I, 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 I used it to be it's five in the stats. I can't. I, I, yeah. I thought I thought there was six and the amount, the amount he was dishing yeah. them out. Now five yellow cards. I don't know how anyone didn't get sent off. Sent off. Um, at times you did feel like West Brom could have got they, away with they, murder. They, they, <laughs> came out, they came out to injure us. They came out to hurt yeah. us. Well, they injured two of our players. Yeah. So. Um, I think I should be fair. I think Shack, Shackleton injured himself. I yeah. Think, I think he after a run, he pulled up after a run. Yeah, but they injured uh, Liam Cooper. Yeah. That was a bad challenge on Liam Cooper. Robson, yeah, Robson Carney. Yeah. yeah. But West Brom, I mean, I was thinking... Deliberately they could, injured him. I was thinking West Brom could get away with murder here. <laughs> like, yeah, they, the, they really, really could. There was, a, there was a lot of... There was one where, in the middle of the park, where Tyler Robertson was just knocked flat while uh, it, someone just literally... I know it's, you know, you're allowed like, like to shoulder barge someone like that. Someone literally just barged into him with two hands, knocked him over, yeah. not giving us a foul. Yeah, I know. And the referee, he booked a few of our coaches as well on the touchline. I think he booked Bielsa. Uh, Colbrand got booked, definitely. Yeah. And Bielsa got booked for 
Yeah, because we to control his coaches. Because we literally have all our coaches stood up in the technical area, just running about screaming when when you're not allowed to, to have you that. Can, you so. can tell like, the, the difference between Corbran getting booked and Bielsa getting booked because he went, when he went over to book Bielsa, I saw about fifty people in the West Stand uh, screaming abuse at the referee. <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one cares if Corbran gets booked, but when Bielsa gets booked, everyone don't like it. No. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the referee, he was average. It was average. Um, the kind of referee you'd expect in this league. Yeah. Uh, but, of course, as I said, we, we did win 1-0. A massive three points. Three points that moved Leeds back to the top of the championship table. And we uh, currently sit one point above West Brom, who are in second, and Nottingham Forest, who are in third. Uh, we are only three points above Charlton, who are in seventh. Uh, but they play against... Uh, um, they play against uh, fourth placed uh, Swansea uh, City um, Sw- tonight. Swansea can't recording. go above us with a win. Yeah, uh, at the time of recording, uh, it's Wednesday, so they, they play tonight, which is a big game. It's it's kind of in our favour, really. Uh, Charlton playing against Swansea at Charlton. Um, so, yeah, uh, Swansea there, two points behind us. Charlton are three points behind us. Um, so, yeah, it, it is a massive game. Uh, for, for Charlton, if a Charlton final no win or less or, or a draw, that would that would be that would be very nice. Draw is always best. You always want yeah. your, your your competitors to draw. Yeah, a draw would be very nice. But Charlton, if they win, they're not going to win six 0 and go above us. So on, on goal difference. So if Charlton win by by one or two nil, oh, yeah, fair enough. We're currently but, we're currently a point clear. Yeah. I, I like I like being because when you because when you're on uh, the same points as someone, uh, you always get these these. Uh, journals and people writing articles going oh yeah Leeds are joint top of the league even though we're top of the league on goal difference <laughs> definition of top of the league so that would annoy me a draw is the best result if, yeah if a draw is the best if, result if two because uh, they are at the very minimum they're playoff contenders if two playoff contenders both drop points that, that's a good result yeah absolutely so we, we want a 1-1 one, one or a 2-2 two, two. Yeah. <laughs> or preferably a 0-0 nil, because nil, then no one scores it's boring yeah. and no one gets into any kind of form yeah um, but yes, <laughs> nil nil will be ideal. <laughs> yeah, but that's a very big game, Charlton versus Swansea. We'll, we'll need to keep an eye out on on what that result is. Some very big games uh, still to play uh, uh, this midweek uh, in the Championship. But right now, at the time of talking, Leeds uh, top of the league, one point clear at the top, and hopefully we uh, remain there uh, as we head into the Millwall game uh, away on Saturday. We will, of course, uh, preview that a little bit later on. But going into that, though, pressure pressures off us now after that West Brom win. Yeah, because there was a little bit of anxiousness and negativity over the weekend after the Charlton result. It kind of felt like we were tailing off a bit yeah. uh, with uh, the amount of points we were dropping. Uh, so it's nice to just get back on track, get the uh, the fans excited for the season again. And obviously um, the players will, will uh, be much happier about going to the next set of games or the next game and then before the international break with a kind of a, a win over a, 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 over a top two competitor because West Brom will be... The yeah, they're, they're going to be up They're going to be in the top three by the look of them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, a team who are not on track uh, currently is Village United uh, under-23s. They've now lost two games in a row. They unfortunately uh, lost 2-1 to Crew uh, up at Four Parch last Monday. Uh, I was there. I stayed behind uh, after the uh, press conference. Uh, a very good turnout as well. It is open to the public. So anyone who, who was wondering if under-23s game at Four Parch uh, is open to the public, it is. Uh, and it, it was a very good turnout uh, on Monday. It was a very good game. Uh, if you, if you get a chance to go up to four parts to watch under twenty threes, definitely go do it. Um, it, it, it was it was quite good. Um, but yeah, I, I joked to you in the stadium that you may as well bring your passport because it's that <laughs> far away. Yeah, it is miles away. It is miles away. Uh, it's four parts. Uh, but yeah, not the result we wanted. Obviously, a, t- a two one loss uh, to Crew at home. I have to um, defer to you, here, mate, because I haven't seen the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was still quite an impressive performance uh, from the team. We showed good fight after being two 0 down at half time, uh, but unfortunately, uh, we obviously uh, couldn't uh, complete the comeback. Uh, I tell you what, bloody hell, Paul Green, he was playing for the <laughs> for the Crew under twenty three. Do you remember him? <laughs> He's definitely not under 23. <laughs> no. <laughs> he's about 40 years old. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's very, very old. Yeah. Um, Paul Green, how the mighty have fallen? <laughs> you know, uh, who was it for... Um, oh, who was it? The guy for Birmingham who was playing for them under 23s. The keeper. Lee Camp? Not Lee Camp, no. The the old keeper. I'm not sure. Oh, the one from a couple of years ago. <laughs> I think he's the lead Stockdale. 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 He was playing for the Birmingham under 23s wow. a couple of years ago. So yeah. you do get older <laughs> keepers playing in there. Yeah. And I swear Tom Heaton was playing for Burnley last year <laughs> in the under-23s. I mean, Bailey Pink Fowler, he's playing in there. So. 
Yeah, he'll, <laughs> he'll be straight in, ball, in, uh, in Burnley's under 23s. Yeah. But yeah, Paul Green playing for the crew uh, under 23s, which is <laughs> which is just insane. Uh, but yeah, it was a good a good performance for me, for the uh, under 23 players, uh, nonetheless. And a player who really stood out for me uh, was 18 year old uh, midfielder Mateusz Bogus, uh, of course, a Polish international, uh, along with uh, Mateusz Klick. And uh, yeah, Bogus, he, he looked very good. He, he was good going forward. He was very creative. And defensively as well, he, he, won, a, he won a few challenges in midfield. And uh, for me, he's an option that should that should seriously be considered for that midfield role. That, you know, of course, Shackleton being injured for sure. We don't know if he's going to be back soon. Tyler Roberts, he didn't really play well against West Brom. So for me, Matthaus Click, he should be considered for that midfield role. I reckon he could do a good job in the first team. He's kind of like for like with Click, though, isn't he, <clears throat> Bogus? I know, <laughs> obviously, they are... Both centre midfielders, both Polish. Imagine but that though, two midfielders playing alongside each other. You've got Matosz Klik and then the young Matosz Klik right next to him. Yeah, I know, but you don't want two like for like midfielders in the same no. uh, three because you need, because the number eight role, the one that Forshaw and Shackleton um, do, is there's a lot of defending as part of it as well. But Bogus can play further forward though. I know, I know, obviously, but you don't want to, you don't want to drop Klik back in, it, it, do you really? No. So. I don't know how you could play Bogus and click yeah. in the same midfield. But but he is a good option to have. It's a though. bit like the uh, the old Gerard Lampard problem. How do you yeah. play them both? Because <laughs> they both do the same job. Yeah, but Bogus is a good option though. Sorry, I started to swear on the podcast. <laughs> I said Lampard there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Bogus is a very good option though. I was very impressed with him. Um, of he's course, a good player. yeah, he, good did, player. he did good in preseason for Leeds. Uh, our mate Chris, he, he talks. Well. Yeah, our mate Chris, he he uh, he's uh, talks he talks big about him. So uh, yeah, Bogus, he, he was very impressed. <laughs> And yeah, he's a he's a very good option for that midfield role. If we ever need if we ever need to call him up, I I, I won't be worried about him. He, he stood out for me. Yeah, if, uh, on if, if Click was ever to be injured, then I wouldn't have a problem with Bogus getting called up. Yeah, uh, a few first teamers. Uh, they also played for the uh, under twenty threes on Monday. Ailing, who's of course returning to match fitness. Uh, Barry Douglas as well, and uh, Bavardi also played. And uh, Bielsa and all his backroom staff uh, watched from inside four parts. They were just looking out like out of windows making notes I was I was always looking back Bielsa just sat on like a high stool just out a window just watching me in 23 so it was great he just he just loves the he loves football I imagine he'll be looking for the next kind of um, brightest prospect to, to break through yeah absolutely he'll, he'll be looking to see whether anyone is better than what we've got currently in, in either the 23s yeah and, I'm sure he's a good, he's an excellent judge of players. Yeah, also, so. of course, yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. If, if he does spot anyone who's good enough to come up, like like Bogus, uh, then why not? Yeah, so exactly. Um, may, as well, may as well follow it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, a two-one loss there, unfortunately for the young twenty threes. But a very good game, though. I highly recommend anyone go up to Four Parks to watch the young twenty threes. Uh, it is a very good experience, and you got you know Barry Barry Douglas who who played in the first half. He he went in, got changed, came out and watched the second half, and everyone was just talking to him. It, it's a great experience up there. So yeah, definitely, I do recommend uh, anyone go up to Four Parks to watch the young twenty threes. It is open to the public, free entry. So yeah, definitely uh, give that. Go. Uh, well, moving on to uh, other bits of news now, and it was revealed earlier uh, in the week uh, that 28 year old defender Luke Halen has uh, signed a new four year deal at Leeds United, uh, keeping him at the club until uh, 2023. Uh, Charles, thoughts, feelings, statements? <laughs> <laughs> Any other brand of opinion? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased um, that we're tying all, all of our players down to long contracts because it means that. The far less likely to be poached by the, the by mid-table Premier League clubs, uh, which has happened in the past, obviously with uh, with Chris Wood and Charlie Taylor, yeah, um, both of Burnley, annoyingly. But yeah, I'm, I'm pleased we've tied Luke Ayling down. It means he's going to be here probably till he nearly retires. Yeah, it'll be 32, uh, probably nearly 33 by the time he finishes his contract. And yeah, I doubt I doubt he'll be playing Premier League or. Championship football when he's thirty three, he'll either retire or he'll go down to League One or be kind of a low level Championship player. Yeah. But yeah, it's nice to have him for the rest of his career. He's he's a good player. Yeah, it's great. He's good. He's it appears to be a good character from what the um, yeah rest of the squad seems. Good to say old Bill. <laughs> good old Bill. What from what the rest of the squad say about him in interviews? He's very popular. Yeah. And. Um, the, the Leeds squad is kind of like a family given how, how long some of them have been together yeah, I mean we've seen it in the documentary they're all you know really good mates yeah they're so. all oh, well uh, Stuart Dallas is like the godfather to Liam Cooper's <laughs> kids so they've known yeah. each other a long, long time yeah it's great 
So yeah, tying all all these uh, really good players down. Luke Hillen, of course, he's a key player in that first team right now. So yeah, it's really good that we're tying all our all our you know, all our first teamers down to to long term contracts. It's a it's a statement of intent from from the owners. Yeah, it's um it's a reward for the performances that the squad's been putting on in the last kind of year and a bit, and uh, obviously a reward for their lo- loyalty to the club because they've had obviously a few offers have come in over the summer for different players. And we've uh, we tied them down to the new contracts. Yeah, so yeah, all great. So yeah, Luke Hale signing a new uh, four-year deal uh, at Leeds United. Uh, on to uh, other bits of news, and just to touch on briefly, uh, reports came out uh, earlier this week uh, on that uh, goalkeeper uh, Kiko Kseer has been accused of racially abusing a Charlton forward Jonathan Lecko uh, during uh, that game last Saturday. The FA are investigating now. Everyone is innocent until proven guilty, uh, but uh, we of course don't condone racism. Uh, racism is unacceptable um, no matter what and whoever is racist should be punished um, but yeah uh, of course innocent until uh, proven guilty but uh, yeah we, we need to see what happens there but yeah just just say racism definitely not acceptable acceptable we don't condone it and no. uh, yeah uh, kick, kick it out um, absolutely um, well looking ahead uh, now to Leeds United's next game uh, Leeds United taking on uh, rivals Millwall away at the Den uh, now we have a dreadful record <laughs> away at the Den <laughs> just, just one win one draw and then four losses from our last six uh, visits there are you nervous heading into Saturday's game? It is one of the hardest away grounds to go to. It is horrible. I mean, the fans get the, right in your back. The fans are horrible. The stadium's horrible. Yeah, Neil Harris looks like a rat. <laughs> it, the, the, <laughs> as, as, when Lee's come to town as well, they sell out the stadium. They, and the they, fans, the, the fans only get time right they ever the sell out. Yeah. The, the team cheats. <laughs> yeah, it, it's an awful place to go. I, I last time, last time I saw, um, not last season, but the season before, um, they scored and won it one nil down there. They scored an offside goal, and just as the liner was about to flag, someone lobbed a bottle of Stella at him, <laughs> and then he chose not to flag it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's a horrible place to go. Isn't so it? it is literally a zoo. It is the yeah. it is the one of the it's just horrible down there. Yeah, it's horrible. And they've got goal music, so they, that can do one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we have a dreadful record down there. Are you nervous heading into it because of our record? I'm not nervous because they are. Well, they're terrible. But yeah, they are good at what they at what they do, which is not play football. <laughs> yeah, and, they, and they are good at head tennis. So if de- we play, if we play them at head tennis, we will lose. Yeah, if we play them at football, we will win. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they're, they're just very good at uh, playing playing their own style of football and getting on the uh, opposition back. Um, they'll, they'll want it to be all corners, stoppages in play, free kicks, in the being in the referee's face, time wasting. That will be their game. Our game has to be keeping the ball in play. Not giving away stupid corners and stupid fouls, and uh, taking our opportunities when they will inevitably arise. Yeah, it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be uh, very difficult. Uh, the last win there was uh, a wonderful win uh, back on the twenty fourth of March twenty twelve. Uh, of course, uh, that draw that I mentioned just then uh, came uh, last season. One uh, one Jack Harrison uh, equalised late on, of course. Uh, so this side do know how to get a result down there. They do. Yeah, um, I was I was I was buzzing about that because they were all. All the Millwall fans were furious, <laughs> so that was hilarious. Um, but yeah, if that was a good goal, um, one of Harrison's uh, only goals for Leeds. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he scored that many. I think he's, what, has he got like four, four or five? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, we, we performed okay down there last time, but we've got, just got to stop them playing their horrific on the eye brand of football. Yeah. We've, got to, we've got to, because we are giving away stupid fouls at the moment, and we don't need to. And if we, if we give away stupid fouls against them, we will especially with the lack of height in our team, we're going to concede. Yeah, But this side that we have now is capable of getting results against so Millwall. Last season, we drew 1-1 one, one down there. We we're capable of beating. Beat There's nobody in this league who I think yeah. we are incapable of beating. Yeah. I mean, the championship this season is dreadful. It is <laughs> awful. There, there if is, we don't go up, it'll be because of our own downfall, not because of the only teams being better. The only teams that are in any way impressive are West Brom and Fulham. Yeah. The rest the rest <laughs> of them are all garbage. <laughs> they're, they're awful, they're all they? garbage. Not in the forest up there. They are, they are they play, dreadful. They, they were dreadful When they us. came telling vote, they were awful. Yeah. So <laughs> the championship is dreadful. And if we don't go up, it'll be because of our own downfall um, yeah this game on Saturday against Millwall it's a game that we really should be winning Millwall are dreadful uh, just uh, they've only won one uh, only won two games this season drawn four and lost three of their uh, opening nine league games uh, played so far to do uh, play their tenth uh, game uh, away at Luton uh, tonight at the time of uh, recording of course Wednesday night so uh, yeah we, we don't know what that score is uh, but right now uh, after nine games uh, they've won two drawn four and lost three uh, yeah they're, they're not good uh, they the, the right uh, down there um, near, near the uh, relegation zone. Um, 
as you would expect them to wherever, live. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the the twentieth, uh, the twentieth right now, and they're five points uh, above uh, Huddersfield, who were uh, are in that uh, last relegation uh, zone place in a uh, twenty seconds. So, uh, yeah, Millwall, the, the dreadful side, they're going to struggle this season, and yeah, it, it, it's teams like this, Charles, who we really should be beating if we want to go up. Uh, but of course, we, we do struggle against these sides well, as well. Charlton, the prime example of that yeah. of teams we should Te- be beating teams in London. Against. Yeah. Always, it's always, it's always we, we've only there. picked up five points from our last 11 league visits to London it's so a, it's, it's a long trip yeah. um, I mean we're looking at the positives we've got an extra day's rest than they do yes um, we uh, have got we've got better players than them and if we if we could unleash Costa down there right down, down our right hand side on their league one standard fullbacks <laughs> we, should, we should be fine yeah um I am I am confident we will get a result down there, whether that's a draw or a win, given how tough the den is. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I'm confident we're going to get something from yeah. the game. Yeah, we 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 we, sh- we should be we should be getting something from the game. Millwall are dreadful. We're of course top of the league. Uh, pressures off us now after beating West Brom one nil at Ellen Road on Tuesday, and we, we just need to get get a good run of form together, don't we? Yeah, if, we can, if we can win just before the international break, yeah. that's the ideal. Yeah, of course, going into an inter- into an international break, so you you, you don't you, you want to win before before that break, don't you? Uh, of course, for, for the next game after that isn't uh, until Argentina game against Birmingham City at home on the 19th of October. Um, so yeah, you, you want to win going into the international break. You want to get a good run of form uh, together uh, as well. So, and uh, yeah, we, we really should be getting the result. Uh, line up for you if, if Pablo Hernandez and Anna Forshaw are fit, w- would you start them? Um, I personally wouldn't start Pablo. Yeah. Um, I think he probably needs a bit longer and if we can just leave him over the international break I'm sure he'll come back fresh for the centenary game if Forshaw's fit I would play him cause yeah. we, because we've lost Shackleton and because we have a hole in our midfield now yeah. it does need to be filled if Forshaw's not fit who, who would you put in midfield? oh that's a tough one <laughs> that's actually a really tough question Roberts? no because I don't think we're solid enough Burgess? he's he's too fo- he's too much of a forward player who else is there? Bamford? No. Put Enketia up front? Maybe McCalmont might do a job there. Yeah. And Mc- uh, maybe McCalmont. You'd put a youngster in there? Away at Millwall? <laughs> it, it, it's it's tough. a tough one. It's really tough. Yeah. I, I don't know what, how you can fix that. Yeah. It, it is tough. So basically we need Adam Forshaw uh, uh, fit. <laughs> unless, unless you just go ailing at right back and shook Dallas in that midfield spot, which might happen. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we, we definitely need, we, we want Adam Forshaw fit then for, yeah. for Saturday's game. But otherwise, yeah, we, 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 we're very short on like who, who we can really put in there, uh, to be honest. Uh, I would ask if you would start Eddie and Ketcher, but Bamford, uh, of course, uh, against West Brom, he picked up the Man of the Match uh, award uh, from Sky TV anyway. Bamford, uh, he had a very good game. He just didn't score, but he had a very good game. Uh, so Bamford... Uh, I'm I'm fine with him starting. Uh, he showed a lot of fight and a lot of strength against West Brom. So coming up th- against Millwall, I think it'll be good. I don't think Eddie would do well at Millwall away. You're not thinking with his pace. His pace might cause him an issue, yeah. but any kind of aerial ball, he's going to lose out. Whereas Bamford might win the occasional aerial ball. Yes. Bamford's quite tall, whereas Eddie's not. Yeah, so Bamford's starting up front uh, for you. But midfield, it, it, hopefully Adam Forshaw's fit, but if he isn't, then it's going to be interesting to see who we play there. It's going to be think, interesting. I think it'll probably be, if he's not fit, it'll probably be Dallas in the middle and yeah. Aylin at right back. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that's a good option there. Yeah, of course, we saw that uh, on, on Tuesday night against West yeah. Brom. Dallas went into mi- into midfield and nailing up We, we didn't right, seem to so. lose any kind of cohesion with Dallas in midfield. So. Yeah. Well, he does a job. He does a job anyway. <laughs> anyway he's he put Dallas. a job in goal. I mean, we literally signed him in 2015 from Brentford as a winger, and now he's playing really good at right back, and now he's be moved into centre mid so I don't think he really cares as long as he gets I mean, to play yeah <laughs> he, he could play his centre back and I'm sure he'd do a good job there so yeah um, yeah, that, that, that's always an option as you just mentioned uh, so yeah it'll be interesting to see what lineup uh, is put out uh, away at Millwall on Saturday uh, but yeah as I mentioned it's the end but we should be winning uh, score prediction Charles I don't like to be negative I don't um, do I you think, think we'll win I think it'll be a draw 1-1 one, one. I'm thinking a 1-1 one, one draw yeah 1-1 one, one. yeah probably Someone like someone like Matt Smith or Lee Gregory will score a terrible goal, yeah. and we'll we'll score one through. You know, I'm going to back Bamford to score at Matt, uh, Millwall away. I'm going nice. to back him. Nice. Well, uh, I'm 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 confident. I'm going to go two one win to Leeds. Two, right. I'm, I'm going to go two one to Leeds. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm. I, ho- yeah. I hope you're right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, as long as we don't lose, I will happily be proved wrong on here yeah. if I we mean, get three points. I'll <laughs> happily take a draw. I don't want to lose, but. Uh, 
Yeah, ho- ho- hopefully we do win. And we can't lose. We, we can't lose any more games. No, we can't. Uh, we, we really should be picking up uh, at least just at least just one point against yeah. Millwall, definitely. Uh, well, that does bring us to the end of uh, episode thirty-seven of the All Things These podcast. Uh, thank you very much, uh, as always, to Charles for joining me in the studio. Thanks for having me, mate. And uh, thanks to uh, everyone else who has listened as well uh, or watched. Uh, we really do uh, appreciate it. Uh, if you enjoyed, them, why not subscribe or follow? Uh, give us a five-star rating uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. To share the podcast around as well uh, that would uh, v- very much uh, be appreciated it will help us out a lot uh, make sure to follow All Things Leeds on social media we're on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram uh, search up All Things Leeds 1 on Twitter and Instagram search up All Things Leeds on Facebook uh, subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel as well uh, now uh, despite it being an international break me and Charles will definitely be back uh, next week we'll have a look at the at look at how players are doing on the international duty we'll also have a look see how, uh, how England are doing uh, so yes yeah, so we will definitely be back uh, next week uh, so for now take care and we'll see you then <laughs>